Everyone knows that Montessori MAC materials seem amazing, but what exactly are you supposed to do with all these beads? Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jennifer from Branch to Bloom, and this video is a continuation of my Montessori golden bead demonstrations. If you're new here, go ahead and click the subscribe button below, and you may wanna just check out the first video in this series by clicking here, and it will take you to the very introduction. By the end of this video, you're gonna feel confident about teaching your children to associate the cards and beads and also to form complex numbers with them, and I'm gonna show you how to do the 45 layout. Let's get started. In previous lessons, I showed you how to teach your child about quantity and place value using the beads and the cards separately. And today we're gonna combine the two and look, teach them how to associate the quantity from the beads with the symbols from the cards. So you'll need a large workspace um, or you'll need to um, just have two separate areas where you're gonna do these two different layouts. So I'm showing you on my quilting table today because this is a nice big space for the camera. Um, I actually recommend having two different mats and doing it in two different areas. So one mat with you and one mat uh, with your child somewhere else in the room so that they can have a little bit of movement. Invite your child over and tell them that you want to tell them some more about the golden beads Make sure that you are really excited and engaging and that you um, feel confident in the lesson before you invite them to do it. They are gonna pick up on your excitement and they will want to learn alongside you. This age between three and six years is such a fun age because whatever emotion you're feeling and whatever enthusiasm you have, they are gonna just mirror that for the most part. So um, just make sure you're really excited about it before you get started. You will need um, nine, a quantity of nine for the units, 10 bars and 100 squares and just 1,000 cubes. So tell them that you need some help with this lesson and say that, um, ask them if they remember laying out the cards in the previous lesson that you've taught them and they probably will. And you can say, this time I want you to lay out the cards in the same way, except I want you to um, only go up to 1,000, not to 9,000 this time. So they will take the cards and they will go and lay them out maybe someplace a little bit far off from you, you know, not in another room, but just a little bit of a ways away on their mat. Um, and then you at the same time are gonna lay out all of the beads in the same manner um, in your own workspace. Once you have laid out all of the beads, one to nine, um, and then 10 to 90 and 100 to 900 and the 1000 and your child has laid out all of the cards in the same way um, you can place a mat to do the formation of number part that we're going to do so this is just a place value mat i sell this mat and it's smaller a smaller version and a larger version in my shop and i'll link it below you don't have to use this one you can just use a plain mat if you want to um, this is just inviting and it has the columns all laid out for you so that it's easier for the child to make that recognition of where everything is supposed to go so um, i also like to use a tray for this part uh, just because um, makes it easier for the, your child to walk back and forth with the materials. Remember, you're gonna have the number cards with your child someplace else in the room, um, so they're gonna be going back and forth between these two presentation areas. So what you'll do is go over and, and look at your child's card layout, and you know if there's anything that needs to be fixed, you might say something like, I wonder um, if this is in the right place, or I wonder, Try not to be like really critical and say, oh, this one's wrong or this one's wrong. Um, and really at this stage, it's not that important that it's perfectly in order, but it is important that all of the place values are, the cards are in their correct place value. So what you'll do is choose a card from any of the four categories. Um, and let's say I choose 20 and put it on the tray 
uh, for your child and then just ask them to go over and get that quantity of beads from what you have laid out over here. So they would bring it over to the beads in this section and they would take two tens because um, that's 20 and put it on the tray and bring it over to you and then you would take the card and place it on the mat and then place the um, two tens just above it and you would say one ten, two tens, yes that's 20 and you would do it for several different um, cards but at this stage don't mix the categories yet. Okay once you have done all four categories um, and it seems like it's really easy for them and they get it. On another day, um, you will have your child lay out the, um, the cards and then have them watch you lay out the beads so they can see the presentation there. Um, and then you'll start asking for quantities at this stage um, from adjacent place values. So you would choose a 20 and a two, for example, and um, and put it on their tray and they would take it over to the beads and take 22 um, and then you would place them this way on the mat 20 and 2 and the two units and I have to be careful not to say and between my place values make sure you're not saying play and because that comes later with decimals uh, so you'll have the two tens, which is 20, two units, which is two. And what number have we created? You can put them on top and it's 22. So um, start with just the two place values that are adjacent to each other and then gradually work up to three and four categories at a time. This can be really fun and just um, try to make really big numbers, really small numbers. Um, make sure that there's variety in the way that you're doing it and part of the Montessori work is always remembering to have care for the environment so when you're finished with everything make sure your child helps you to put it all back where it belongs on the shelf. Now that you have shown your child all about the quantities and the symbols and how they are associated, you can move on to this really exciting and big work. Um, I make these giant Montessori 45 layout mats and I have the link for this mat in the description box below. Um, you can see just from looking at the mat that this is gonna be a huge work. And basically what you're gonna do is show your child how to count all the way to 9,999 using the cards and the quantity of beads. And it's called the 45 layout because um, you use 45 of each of the different place value categories. So that's how many you'll need for this um, work. Now, most people don't have 45 of the thousand cubes. It gets a little pricey. So what I did for our house is I just bought actually for my extra thousand cubes, some plain wooden blocks that we use. Um, my children were able to make that leap of abstraction that this is representing um, the thousand cube. There's also, I also have some of these wooden ones um, that have actually the printed dots on them and I will link all of these materials below. Um, if those are not in your budget, I totally get it. And uh, I made a printable that has all of the golden bead materials, including the thousand cubes that you can print and tape together. And this one, I like it to have a little bit of weight. So what I actually did is I um, taped together my thousand cube and I just put one of these wooden blocks inside. So it looks a little nicer um, than the plain wooden ones. Um, but at any rate, those are some different options that you can do. Uh, you can also just use a plain mat um, or you can just use the floor. And again, if you need a little help with the keeping the columns straight, which is what this mat does beautifully, uh, you could always just use some painter's tape or masking tape to lay out a space for your child to do this work on the floor. 
Uh, so what you'll do is call them over. You're gonna need the whole quantity of all of the complete golden bead material, and that includes uh, the number cards. So you'll need those as well, numbers one to 9,000. And you, we're just gonna lay them all out on the mat, starting with the units on the right and moving all the way to the thousands on the left. Again, the reason that we have it in this particular orientation is because this is the way that we write numbers uh, in English. And so we want them to be um, laid out, the quantities to be laid out the exact same way that you would read a number from left to right. So uh, you'll start with the units and move all the way up to the thousands. As you can see, I've laid out, I've gone ahead and laid out the entire material so that you can see what it looks like when it's finished. Um, what you'll do is have the children um, lay out the number cards and the quantities next to them. What's different about this layout is that whereas previously we just counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine with ones, with units up, this time you have one next to the one, you've got two next to the two, etc. And when you're counting these, you're gonna say one unit, two units, three units, four units, etc. up to nine units. And then they'll be able to visually see that there isn't any more space um, in this column for the units and you can say when we get to nine, we move to 10 um, and you can they can visually see that there are 10 units in the 10 bar and it's gonna go 10, one 10, two tens, three tens, four tens, again, all the way up to nine tens. When we get to 10 tens, what do we have? We have 100, so you'll have the 100 square. Now in the 100s, uh, when we get up to the five, for my quantities, um, I have switched over to these wooden blocks and they have the just dots on them to represent the beads. Children usually understand that, but you may need to point it out. Um, it's only just for cost purposes because the beaded ones are more expensive. So most people switch over to the wooden ones when they do this material. Um, and again, we'll say 100, 200s, 300s, 400s, to nine hundreds, and then what do we do when we have ten hundreds? That is one thousand, and we have the thousand cube. Um, it doesn't hurt to just show them again that there are ten hundreds, and point out the number of zeros as you're doing this. And my thousands are a little bit of a hodgepodge. I think most people who do their thousands or do this layout at home have a similar experience just because the thousand cubes are so prohibitively expensive. Uh, so I have the I have a couple of the beaded ones. This one came with my golden bead material. Um, my second beaded cube, this one actually came with my uh, long chains, the cubing chains. Um, and then I have purchased these extra wooden ones. Uh, and like I said earlier, I have the rest of mine uh, are just plain wooden blocks. And this one, again, is the printed version from the printable that I have linked below. And I like it to have weight in it. And as you can see the way that they're stacked, you can kind of understand why I like it to be weighted. It makes it easier to stack these columns. Uh, so if you're using it for this, I do recommend putting some kind of weight in it. Uh, otherwise, my experience was that they kind of tip over and they don't, they just don't stay in a nice tower when you get to the 9,000. Uh, so anyway, that's the printed one. And here we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. When you get to the end, your child will have counted all the way up to 9,000. And what I really like about this work is that it's so big and the children get so excited about it. A lot of times when they finish it, um, when I was working in the classroom, I would take a picture of the children with their work and they always just had like the biggest grin because it's a lot. And because it's so much, I would encourage you to take breaks and uh, let them just um, come back to it several times throughout the day. Um, you may only get to 1,000 the first time you try it. That's okay, you know, even if they only get partway through. Never try to push them into doing something that's not 
really exciting or not really fun to them. So make sure that you are observing and watching for fatigue because it is a fatiguing thing to count this far. And just make sure that if they do seem like they're getting tired that you make sure and give them breaks. Um, one thing that's worked really well in my classroom and at home is to make a little name card for each kid. And it seems funny because I only have two children. It doesn't seem like I would need it. Um, but it actually having a card with their name on it that if they weren't finished with their work and they wanted it to be left out and not touched by their sibling, uh, just putting that name card gives them the ownership. So it says, I'm coming back to this, so you can't take it or don't, don't take it from me. So that's just my uh, wrap up for the 45 lesson and I hope it was helpful for you. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, would you go ahead and just click the thumbs up down below? That lets other people find my channel more easily on YouTube. And also all the materials we use today are linked in the description box below for your convenience. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those. I always check my comments. And thanks so much for watching today. I really appreciate it and I'll see you next time.